a ministry that believes in honesty, transparency, and the Word of God. This is Greater Works Community Fellowship Church of God in Christ, encouraging God's people to encourage the world. Let's explore the truth, where the Word of God begins to open our hearts, our mind, and spirit right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give God glory this morning, for He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, let's worship him on this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. God is blessing. God is blessing. It's good to see each and every one this morning. Hallelujah. Let's give God, continue to give God praise on this morning. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Let's praise him. The praises all belong to him. And because of that, I am eternally grateful. So we're going to lift him up. We're going to give God praise on this morning for this fleeting moment. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I thank God for being here today. I thank God for blessing uh, we serve a mighty God, and he's great, and he's greatly to be praised. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Pastor Gord McKinney of Greater Works Community Fellowship here in the great uh, state of North Carolina. We're located in Wake Forest uh, and God is truly blessing our ministry uh, during this time. So I just wanna greet each and every one that has tuned in on Facebook. Uh, we just welcome each and every one of you and prepare for a message that will, I'm sure that will bless you because I do have a word from the Lord on this morning. And so this morning, uh, let's open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for all that you're doing. And God, we ask that you bless uh, this word on this morning, bless your people on this morning and have your way in our lives. God, we ask that whatever we're going through, allow us to pause during this time and reflect on your goodness and reflect on your mercy. God, whatever issue that we're, we're having problems with, God, allow us to know that you are the solution to all our issues, to all our problems. And we know that you can solve each and every thing that we may have that's on our hearts on this morning. So for that, we lift you up and we magnify your name. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray, amen, amen. Again, thank you for joining this, us this morning. And let's go, we'll go ahead and get into the word of God on this morning. This morning, I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke, first chapter 46 through 55. Praise God. And it reads, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant for behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed for he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel and remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, to his seed forever. God, we thank you for this word. We ask that you bless in a mighty way, O oh God. And God, we just continue to lift you up and continue to magnify you on this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. Today, I'm gonna to talk about to magnify the Lord, to magnify the Lord. As you know, this is, uh, we're getting into the Christmas season, the Advent season, and it's a special time of year. You can feel it in the air. You can feel that the, the anticipation of the celebration of the Christmas, uh, the day that we celebrate Christ's birth. And so I during this season, I just want us to focus on what this season's all about. Uh, as you know, the season has been mixed up in commercialism and, and buying gifts and, and stores trying to meet their bottom line, trying to uh, get from being in the red to the black. Uh, but Christmas is much more than that. As a matter of fact, Christmas has been used by the enemy to steer us away from the true meaning of this time of year, the true meaning that why we pause during this time, because we want to acknowledge Jesus Christ. We want to acknowledge what God has done for us by sending his son, Jesus Christ. And so today I want to focus in on this story, this narrative of Jesus Christ before he was born, this narrative in the scripture that I've just read from, and in the book of Luke is the story of Mary. Mary, before she buried our Lord and Savior, she had a, a trip and she traveled to see her cousin Elizabeth. And as she uh, encountered her cousin Elizabeth, both were pregnant. Both were bearing greatness within them. Yes, Elizabeth 
was bearing John the Baptist. He was the person that were, is to tell the fact that Jesus is on his way. And Mary had our Messiah. So they both encountered uh, a, a, a exchange prior to their delivery. And so, oh, what a wonderful time that was. They were able to fellowship together. They were so high with expectations. And so out of this expectation, Mary uttered this song. Mary uttered this, 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 these verses to, uh, to in remembrance of the moment. And so here today, we're focusing on this this song, this, this sonnet that Mary had because of the excitement that was in the air. This song is called The Magnificent. And in, in the scripture, Mary sheds light on how to magnify the Lord. So come with me this morning as we go through the Magnificent. Come with me as we read uh, the, the, the joy that came out of Mary's soul as she was anticipating the arrival of Jesus Christ. So as we look at this, there's some points I do want us to follow. Uh, Mary truly shed light on, uh, shows how we should worship the Lord and how that we should also, we also should anticipate and wait on his promises. Mary in her youth, she basically gives us a, a, a roadmap of how to, to worship God when we're expecting great things to happen in our lives. So let's go ahead and look at it. As we look at this, these verses, we must understand, we must worship God with great humility. Please note, we must worship God with great humility. Verse 48 says, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For who, for he who is uh, mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is those who fear him from generations to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and imagination in their hearts. So to magnify means to focus. And as we focus on God, we must realize what Mary is basically telling us, that we must realize how small we are as it relates to the greatness of God. And I'm so glad that God is God and not me. Because if I was God, we would be doomed. And I know that we know that we are just images of God. It's like a shadow puppet. And I know as kids, we used to go and go next to a wall and have a light shined on our hands. And we'd make all kinds of signs with our hands. And, and we know that we see images from the light. On, shine, reflecting on the wall and we make a, a different bird and make it all different types of signs and, and it looks like a bird, but it's not a bird. It's an image that we've created through the light that was shined on our hands. We too are images of God. We're not God. I don't care how much money you've made during the course of your life. I don't know how much favor you think that you have. I don't know. I don't care how much power and how much education. We are not God. And so what we have to mind remind ourselves is that when we come to God, we must really come to God with humility because we are lowly. We are his creatures. He has created us. And Mary is coming to God in humility. He said he chose this humble maid servant. So she knows her station in life, but she also knows that God shows her to do great things. God will choose you as well to do great things. And a lot of times he chooses people, ordinary people. Mary was an ordinary person, but she did 
extraordinary feat by delivering our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we approach the Lord, we must puff down our nature. We must come to God in a way in which it's not about our agenda. It's all about his will. And Mary was a willing vessel to be used by God to deliver Christ. That should tell us something about ourselves as we, as we find ourselves trying to do the will of God. Because if we put our will above his will, it's going to be all for nothing. Everything that we try to do, it, it's, it's going to, to perish. But what we do for Christ, praise God, hallelujah, will last. Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. That is amazing. Maid servant. I'm a lonely, lowly position in life. And according to your word, let it, let it be according to your word. So what Mary is saying is, I want to wrap myself in your word and whatever your word tells me to do, I will do it. And so we have to find ourselves to be at that place, humble, willing, pliable, we are on the potter's wheel. We are being molded by the potter, allowing him to shape us, to mold us, to, to make us the way he wants us to be. And when we're at that place, great things will come from the vessel. Great things will come from the, the clay when you allow yourself to be placed on the potter's wheel. Secondly, I want thing I want to bring out in this text is that there is no social status when it comes to Christ. There is no social status when it comes to Christ. Verse 52 says, he has put down the mighty from their thrones and he's exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. Wow, that's prophetic right now in this time. It is amazing how we are seeing a evolution or a change, a revolution that's taking place. And those that are in power, their, 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 their lots, their situations in life is tr dramatically changing right now. The rich are being unsettled about what's going on. You see, Jesus, when he was here, he was always talking about the kingdom. And the kingdom is not like uh, the kingdoms of this world. He says something about the meek shall inherit the earth. And it's a pendulum switch that takes place when we're talking about the kingdom. And so we are, are here, Mary is talking about what God is doing. She's dealing with kingdom principles. The upside down nature, the right, the, 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 the life of, of, of the believer and the, the life that we live as kingdom people, we have to understand that life is, is, is the low is set upon high and, and the high will come down. And so when we come to be servants of Christ, we have to understand that we're here just like Christ was here to serve. And we have to come to him humi with humility. And we know that there's no social status. And you know, today, uh, especially with social media, one of the things that we all, especially those who are uh, constantly on social media, there are people that are making money, trying to make money, and they want to have followers to subscribe, to do everything to make sure that their numbers are up. And, and, and what we find is that because of the social uh, media-driven world, we, we, we're trying to be and trying to establish status. Uh, today, uh, if they, they call you an influencer, if you have over, uh, uh, I'd say, 100,000 followers, or uh, if you get to the million mark, you really get to a place where 
people, advertisers give all they can to make sure that you advertise their product because they know that people are influenced by you. But you, as a believer, you are an influencer. You don't have to have millions and millions of people behind you. See, the social status does not make a difference when it comes to the kingdom of God. Your social status, all your social status needs is that you are a believer and you belong to king, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And when you are connected with the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and you're connected to Jesus Christ, our savior, you have all the status you need. You don't have to be a media influencer to influence the masses. And so here, Mary is saying that, you know, God is, is, is mighty. And, 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 and he's so mighty, he has the ability to put down the mighty from their thrones. And he has the ability to exalt the lowly. There's a switch that's going on. We have to understand that God is totally in control of our situation. And because of that, we have status, not worldly status, but we have heavenly status. Mary is tuning in to her heavenly status because she was a maidservant chosen by God. You see, in the kingdom, there is no need for greed. There is no need for big eyes and little U's. In the kingdom of God, he just wants us to come to him as a little child, free of baggage, free of racism, free of resentment and strife. He just wants us to come just with a loving heart. See, the, the problem with wealth is that wealth and possessions can end up possessing you. We see so many uh, people that spend their whole life accumulating things. There's a show on TV called Hoarders, and you can't even halfway go into some people's houses because they are so attached to the things that they've purchased during the course of their life. But see, we have to have an understanding that everything has an expiration date. As a matter of fact, we have an expiration date. The things that we purchase has an expiration date. You can buy a brand new car, 2020 uh, truck, Chevrolet truck, but within the next two, three, as, well, actually, as soon as you drive off that lot, that, that car loses its value. We have to have an understanding. We can't put value on things. We put value on the king of kings, the Lord of lords. We put value on the God's will in our life and how we are to, to project ourselves as it, as we relate to those who we are among. You see, we, we all, like I said, we all have an expiration date. And when that expiration date comes, we have to find ourselves doing and being involved in the will of God. Possession, things, they will all pass away. But when you invest your life in the things of God and Jesus Christ, that is eternal. Lastly, Mary realizes she was a the, the uh, recipient of a promise that was foretold through generations. And so in this magnificent, Mary pulls out the fact that God keeps his promise. Could someone say God keeps his promise? Could you type down God keeps his promise? I thank God because God will keep his promise. Verse 54 says, he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, 
to his seed forever. She is talking about the promises of Abraham and how the promises have passed down from generation to generation. Promises are very important. Promises are, are so important that we, we have built our lives around promises, marriages. When we get married, that is a promise. We promise to be true. We promise to allow ourselves to be faithful. Promises, family structure is built on promises. Contracts is a promise. Promise is so imperative, especially when it comes to the kingdom of God. You know, several years ago, I, I was a, uh, a director of a mentoring program. And one of the challenges we had was when we provided a mentor for a young person, the, the young person, a lot of times the young people were coming from broken homes. They, they've had some issues with the law and because of, of resentment, because of the father was not there, the mother was not doing what she was supposed to do. And in those situations, when we would come to the household, Usually I would think that the child would be elated that, hey, there's somebody that's going to be here and spend time with me. But many times these children were suspect. They saw that here's this person coming in saying that they're going to spend time with me. But every time some adult male that was in my life or adult female was in my life, I've been let down. Every time someone told me they were going to take me to, to, to uh, uh, McDonald's, I never received a call saying I'm on my way. Every time I was told that I, I was going to go to the park, my father never showed up. Every time I had some type of expectation from a parental figure or a mentor, I've always been let down. The scripture says heart, the, 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 the scripture says, the hope deferred makes the heart sick. But I'm so glad that we serve a God that is comes through when he makes a promise. I'm so glad that our God is a promise keeper. And here Mary is excited, she's elated, and in through this song she's saying that we serve a God that's a promise keeper, and he's kept his promise. Not only did he keep his promise, I'm a recipient of this promise that he's kept. You see, we celebrate this, this promise that was kept and foretold through generations. We celebrate the fact that, that God has come, he, he's God has come through Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus Christ's name, Emmanuel, means God with us. He kept his promises, and he's, and he's, he's not slack concerning his promises. Uh, Peter says in 2 second, in second Peter, we magnify God in our worship because he is God and that he is not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness, but it's long suffering to us. As we celebrate this Christmas, this year we must magnify God in our worship. We must lift him up. We must exalt him. We must praise him and we must forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him because he is God that is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish. You see, the promises of God are yea and amen. God keeps his promises, and God, with all of his infinite wisdom. And with all of his, his, his power and all of his glory, span 42 generations and handpicked this virgin Mary to bore his son, the savior of humanity. Glory to God in the heavens. Peace and goodwill toward men. 
and that God delivered this sacrificial lamb to us. So to magnify God is to be humbly focused on God while remembering our life decisions are wrapped up in eternity. See, God loves us so that he kept his promising by giving his son to us. And by Christ and, and Christ's destruction, he was destroyed and he was humiliated. He was crucified. He was killed on the cross. And because of that sacrifice, we all become and we can become the joint heirs of him. See, he, through his promise, he promised that he was going to send a son to salvage humanity. God is a promise keeper. And that's what we celebrate on this, this during this season. His life, he, just, he allowed his, his life, offered his life as a sacrificial lamb. Destroying sin and sin's grip on humanity. Because of that, we can have eternal life. You see, that sacrifice was the promise that God would be with us. Emmanuel, God with us. So if you're going through trials during this time, Christmas season, it can be a hard season on those, especially those who have lost loved ones, especially of those who have, have, have lost their jobs, especially of those who are, are, are having issues with relationships. This can be a hard time, but I want you to know that God is with us. God is with us. Many times as a, as a minister going to people in a time of need, in time of challenges, they may be in the hospital. And when I go to visit them, there are times when I really don't say anything. All I say is, God is with you. God is here. I'll spend my time there just being a presence. Letting know that the presence of God is also there. I want to let you know that that is therapeutic in itself. Knowing that you have a friend that's closer than a brother that will be by your side in the middle of your turmoil. God is with you. Scripture proclaims he will never leave us nor forsake us. He is there. All you have to do is call out to him. And if you're at that place where you're ready to give God your all, you want to surrender your life to him, this is a perfect time of year. And if you're a sinner, repeat after me. And if, you, if you're a sinner, if you want to give your life to Christ, all you have to do is repeat after me. Dear Lord, I have sinned and I am a sinner. But I come to you because I know that you are my savior. And I give my life to you. I believe that you are the Christ, the Messiah. And I surrender my life to you. I believe that you died for my sins and you rose on the third day. And for that, I'm forever grateful. And I follow you. I worship you. And I want to be a part of your family. Forgive me of my sins. I want to be part of this glorious kingdom. And with that, brother and sister, you are saved. Welcome, welcome to this wonderful family of God. I want to make sure that if you've received Christ, 
this morning, make sure you connect with a church in your area. If you live in Wake Forest area, please send your information through the chat. We will contact you and make sure you get connected with us. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God, we just thank you for this message today. I ask that you bless those that receive this word, oh God. God, we thank you because you we are magnifying you this morning. We're lifting you up this morning. And we know as we lift you up, oh God, you lift us up, oh God. As we lift you higher, we go higher. And we just give you praise and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I thank God for all of you. Let's get prepared for communion. This morning, I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And the scripture reads, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. During this time, we are taking communion because we understand the power of its symbolism. You see, our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, on his last night with his disciples, had a very important meal. He explained to his disciples things that were to come. And he wanted them to remember the sacrifice. So in that, he took the bread, said, gave thanks, with that, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it. He said, this is my body that will be broken for you. Take, eat, eat all of it. Then later that evening, he took the cup of wine and said, this wine is the new covenant. This is my blood that will be shed for you. Take, drink, drink ye all of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you and we give you praise for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God, we thank you. We magnify you. We give you glory on this morning. We ask that you bless each and every one that has tuned in on this morning. Bless the families. God, we ask that you bless the health of our community, oh God, and the world. God, we're just going to lift you up. We're going to magnify you on this day because the glory and honor all belongs to you. And all these things we pray in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. I pray that you have a wonderful week. God bless you. We praise God for you joining in with us on this morning. We pray that God will overtake you in your journeys this week. Be blessed. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you for watching Greater Works Community Fellowship Church of God in Christ. Hey, make sure you join us every Wednesday for Bible study on Facebook Live. Pastor Gordon McKinney is featuring a series on the focus of the family, a transparent, in-depth look at God's families. Messy, not perfect, but full of purpose and ordained by God. Join us every Wednesday evening for this exciting series on Zoom at 7 p.m. And join us every Friday morning at 6 a.m. for our weekly prayer call. The number and code information are posted on our screen, and we encourage everyone to attend virtual Sunday 
Sunday School with us at 9 a.m. This quarter is being taught by our very own Sunday School Superintendent, First Lady Veronina McKinney, and it's so powerful and easy to follow her teaching of the Word, making Sunday School so exciting. And if you love what you hear and see, please support our ministry. Remember, we have various ways for you to give. You can give through Givelify. Just type Greater Works Community Fellowship. You can also give on Cash App. Just type in dollar sign GWCF Ministries. Finally, you can also pay through PayPal by going to our website at shalyoudo.org. There you will see the PayPal insignia. We encourage everyone to visit our YouTube channel at the Shall You Do channel. You will find our ministry content on demand. Make sure to like it, subscribe, and share. Every time we upload new content, you will be notified so you can view all of our on-demand messages. Music provided by Trumpet and Harp Music. This is a 2021 Greater Works Community Fellowship production. All rights reserved.